Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose a and b are real numbers. If a, b is greater than zero, then either one, a is greater than zero and b is greater than zero, or two, a is less than zero and b is less than zero. Now, before we get into the proof of this theorem, we are going to rely on the following fact. And it's the fact that for every three real numbers, a, b, and c, if we have that a is greater than b and c is less than zero, then ca is less than cb. Now, the book that I'm basing this off of is Introduction to Real Analysis by Bartle and Sherbert. And in the book, this fact is Theorem 2.1.7c. And just so you're aware, I am giving a different proof to Theorem 2.1.10 than the one that's given in the book. But now, let's get into proving this theorem. And to start out the proof, let's suppose A and B are real numbers. And our whole goal from here is to prove if this is true, then either 1 or 2 is true. And to prove this, we're actually going to prove the contrapositive. That is, we're going to prove if both 1 and 2 are not true, then this is not true. Our goal from here is to prove that this does not hold. That is, we want to prove that AB is not greater than zero. And to prove that, we're going to consider three primary cases. Either A is equal to zero, A is greater than zero, or a is less than zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to prove in either case we have that a, b is not greater than zero. Let's start with the first case where a is equal to zero. In the case where a is equal to zero, well, a times b is equal to zero. Right, so just like that. So we have proven in this case that AB is not greater than zero, as required. So this completes the case where A is equal to zero. Now let's move on to the case where A is greater than zero. In the case where A is greater than zero, what we're going to do in this case is we're actually going to consider the possibilities of what B could be, right? Because we also know that either B is equal to zero, B is greater than zero, or B is less than zero. Now, if B is equal to zero, then again, we had that a times b is equal to zero. So in the case where b is equal to zero, we had that a times b is not greater than zero. So now, the only other possibilities of what b could be are that either b is greater than zero or b is less than zero. Now, it turns out we cannot have the case that b is greater than zero. The reason why is because if we did have the case that b is greater than zero, then we would have that both a is greater than zero and b is greater than zero, which means one would be true. But by our assumption, one is not true. So we cannot have the case that b is greater than zero. So this could only mean that b is less than zero. So we know that a is greater than zero and b is less than zero. Now, applying theorem 2.1.7c, we can obtain that a, b is less than zero. The reason why is because if we call a capital A, zero capital B, and b capital C, well, it follows that c, a is less than c, b. So in our case, we have that b times a is less than b times zero. In other words, a, b is less than zero. So we have shown in the case where either b is greater than zero or b is less than zero, that a, b must be less than zero. Since b equals zero and either b is greater than zero or b is less than zero is every possibility of what b could be, we must have that a, b is not greater than zero. So. Ultimately, in the case where a is greater than zero, a, b is not greater than zero. 
So this completes the case where a is greater than zero. Now let's move on to our final case where a is less than zero. So what we're going to do in this case is we are again going to consider what the possibilities of what b could be. Again, if b is equal to zero, then a times b is equal to zero. In other words, a times b is not greater than zero. Right? So we have proven that this is false in the case where b is equal to zero. Now, let's consider the other possibility, which is that either b is greater than zero or b is less than zero. Now, in this situation, we cannot have the case that b is less than zero. The reason why is because if we did have the case that b is less than zero, then we would have that a is less than zero and b is less than zero, which means that two would hold, but two does not hold. So we would get a contradiction. So it is not the case that b is less than zero. So this can only mean that b is greater than zero. So we see that a is less than zero and b is greater than zero. So now at this point, we can apply theorem 2.1.7c. If we call b capital A, zero capital B, and a capital C, well, it will follow that C A is less than C B. Or in this case, A times B is less than A times zero, which means A B is less than zero. So again, we've established that A B is not greater than zero. So putting this all together, in the case where A is less than zero, we had two possibilities we considered. Either B is equal to zero or either b is greater than zero or b is less than zero. But no matter which one of these two happens to be true, this is false. So in the case where a is less than zero, this is false. And that completes case three. So we have proven in all three cases that this is false. So what that means is under the assumption that one and two do not hold, this does not hold. So we have proven the contrapositive of this theorem which means we have proven the theorem. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.